Let us now look at this question. How many of the given statements are true? Okay, children, there are about three statements given here and we need to see how many of them are true. The first one, in a cockroach, the brain is represented by a supraesophageal ganglion that supplies nerves to the maxillary and the labial palps. Now, maxillary and labial palps are the mouth parts of the cockroach. And yes, this statement is correct. The brain is represented by the supraesophageal nerve, the ganglion that supplies nerves to the maxillary and the labial palps. This is correct. So, one, this statement is right. The compound eyes are situated at the ventral. So, I'm just going to take this statement just to remember how many are correct and how many are incorrect. The compound eyes are situated at the ventral surface of the head. Now, if you have seen, noticed the head of the cockroach, you would have seen a pair of compound eyes on the dorsal surface. It is not on the ventral. It is on the dorsal surface. So, that statement is incorrect. Each compound eye consists of 200 hexagonal or materia. No. See, hexagonal, the shape is right. Or materia is also right. Now, the compound eye of cockroach, each of them has almost 2,000, not 200, 2,000 hexagonal omateria. Singular is omateridium. Now, the images captured by this, in fact, forms a mosaic image. It's of a low resolution. Okay, so this is incorrect. So, how many statements are true? It is only one. So, now let's look at the options. Is it A1, B2, 3 or nil? It is A that is correct. The rest are, of course, wrong. That was an easy question, right? So, you can see the, of course, these are the diagrammatic representation of the brain. And this, the second diagram, you can see the eyes of the cockroach. And this is how the compound eye looks. The supraesophageal ganglion present in the head region of a cockroach supplies nerves to the antennae and the compound eyes. The compound eyes are located on the dorsal surface of the head and each of the eyes consists of about 2,000 hexagonal or materia. So, the right answer among the three statements, only one was true. That is the right answer. Let us now look at this question. In which part of the male reproductive system of cockroaches is the sperm stored? Well, let me show you the male reproductive system of the cockroach. Okay. Now, the testis. This is where the sperms are made, right? Or this is where the sperms are formed. Now, these sperms are stored in the seminal vesicle, okay? Now, here they glue together to form what is called as a spermatophose. The nourishment for these developing sperms are supplied or rather provided by the mushroom gland. Now, this ejaculatory duct, is the duct that carries the sperms, the form sperms to the genital pore. Okay. Vast deferents are again ducts which are helping in the passage, the movement of the sperm. It's a transport medium through which the sperms can travel. So, your answer to this question, in which part of the male reproductive system of cockroaches is the sperm stored? Is it the mushroom gland? No, this provides nourishment. Seminal vesicle? Yes, this is the right answer. Ejaculatory duct is incorrect and testis is where the sperms are formed. That was easy. The sperm are produced by testis. The mushroom gland helps in the nourishment of sperm. The seminal vesicles store the sperm and sperm glue together to form the spermatophose. The ejaculatory duct is a muscular tube that opens into the male genital pore. So the right answer is seminal vesicle. That is the right answer. Now, a very interesting question for you. Absence of neck helps the frog too. You all knew that, right? That the frogs don't have a neck. They have a head and the trunk. Now, how does this help the frog? Okay? How do, how do you think it helps the frog? Is it to jump on the ground? Catching prey? Respiration? Swimming? Have you all noticed how a frog moves? Does it walk? Or does it swim? Of course, in the larval stage, you see it swim. If it is in the water, it swims. But on ground, it hops, it jumps from its hind legs, right? So, this is enabled or rather it, this is supported by the fact that there is no neck. So, absence of neck helps the frog to jump on the ground. This is the right answer. Catch the prey. How does the frog catch the prey? 
does it use its hands? No, it has a sticky tongue, right? By which it captures its prey. This is wrong. Respiration. How do you think the frog respires? The adult frog respires with the help of its skin, the lining of the mouth or the lungs. What about in its larval stage, the tadpole, the tadpole stage? It respires with the help of the gills, right? So this again is wrong. Swimming in water. How, does you, how do you think uh, the frogs swim in water with the help of their webbed feet? So if you see, if you have the digits of the frogs like this, there it is webbed. This region is webbed. That is called as webbed feet. That's what helps in swimming in water. So it's not because of the absence of neck. The right answer is to jump on the ground. So of course this frog, for it to jump, it uses its hind legs. The absence of neck helps the frog while jumping. Frogs use their hind limbs for jumping and absence of neck aids the movement. The bilobed tongue of the frog helps in catching the prey. The frog uses its skin, the lining of the mouth and lungs to exchange gases with its surroundings. Its larval stage lacks lungs and uses a pair of gills to respire. The webbed feet of a frog enables it to swim in water. So the right answer, abscess of neck helps it to jump on the ground. So that is the right answer. Now let us look at this question. Identify the incorrect statements. Children remember? The incorrect statements about the frog. Okay, so now there are about four statements given here. We need to say which is wrong. The first one, the ventral side on the frog's skin is olive green. Well, I don't know how many of you have seen the ventral side of the frog. But anytime if you can, uh, let's say, you can go through uh, one of these scientific channels, the Discovery Channel or the National Geographic or Google it and see. If you look at the dorsal surface, okay, it is greenish in color, but the ventral surface is about a pale yellow in color. So it is not olive green. This statement is incorrect. So I'm just going to mark it wrong. The body of a frog can be divided into the head, neck and trunk. Is there a neck for frogs? No. In fact, the absence of neck is what helps it to jump on the ground. So the body is just divisible into the head and the trunk. This statement is also incorrect. So we've got two statements that are incorrect. The eyes of frogs are protected by a nictitating membrane. Is this right or wrong? Have you noticed it? If you look carefully at the eyes, there is a nictitating membrane that protects the frog when it swims in water. It protects the frog's eyes when it swims in water. So yes, this statement is right. Absence of vocal uh, sacs, absence of vocal sacs are a characteristic feature of male frogs. Mating season, if you are around a place where there are a lot of frogs, all that you can hear is the croaking sound. I don't want to make the sound, it will scare you. But from a frog, it is a croaking sound. And which among the frog, is it the male or the female that is making it? It is the males, the croaking, you know, it's during the mating season. This is a characteristic feature of the male frogs because of the presence of the vocal sacs. Again, this is incorrect because this says absence. So now, how many statements have we identified as being wrong? One, two and four because three is correct. Okay, so now let's look at the options. Is it one and four? No. Is it 1, 2 and 4? Yes. 2, 3 and 4? No. 1, 2, 3 and 4? No. That's wrong. See, can you see this? The pale yellow I told you on the ventral side and the dorsal side, of course, is an olive green. And then you can see the nictitating membrane. Can you see the nictitating membrane? So beautiful it looks in the eye of a frog. And then the vocal, so uh, the vocal sacs of the male frog. The ventral side of the frog skin is pale yellow and the dorsal side is olive green in color. The body of the frog is divided into head and trunk. Absence of the neck ensures that there are no injuries as the frog jumps on the land. In female frogs, the vocal sacs are either rudimentary or absent. Okay, rudimentary means highly reduced, highly reduced and non-functional. Presence of vocal sacs, a characteristic feature of male frogs. A distinct sound known as croaking is produced by the male is used during the mating season. The, nit the nictitating membrane present in the eyes of the frog help for it to see in water. 
So the right answer is 1, 2 and 4. Three of the four statements were incorrect. Only one was correct. That is the right answer. The fertilized eggs of cockroaches are encased in capsule called as. Complete the sentence and that's your new question. Is it the ovarioles, the spermatheca, utheca or omatidia? I don't know how many of you have seen it, but I have seen it. There are some cockroaches, you know, when they're running around, not that my home is infested with cockroaches, but we do see cockroaches, right? So, I have seen, and I'm sure even you would have noticed, there are some cockroaches where towards their, you know, the last part of their body or the posterior end of their body, there is this dark brown, you know, a structure like this jutting out of their body. Now, this is the egg case or the utheca that the female is ready to, uh, what do you say, deposit. Now, the female deposits at least about 9 to 10 utheca. Now, what do you find inside each of these utheca? About 14 to 16 fertilized eggs. So, can you imagine? That's why you see, you know, cockroach infestation becomes so much when it is not handled or treated immediately. So, the utheca is where the fertilized eggs are kept. Okay, these capsules are laid by the female cockroaches, obviously not by the male. So, the right answer is C, Uthika. What about A, ovarioles? Now, ovarioles are the ovarian tubules. Ovaries, a pair of ovaries are found in the female reproductive system of the cockroach. Now, we know that sexes are separate in cockroach. So, in the female cockroach, there is a pair of large pair of uh, ovaries. And these ovaries have ovarian tubules called as Ovarial, so this is wrong. Spermatheca. Now, these are found in the sixth segment of the female uh, cockroach in their reproductive part of the reproductive system, and this is where it receives the sperms and stores it. This again is wrong. What do you think is omatidia? Nowhere connected to reproduction. These are units of the compound eye. In fact, cockroach we all know has compound eyes, and each compound eye has about 2000 hexagonal. Units called as omatidia. Singular is omatidium. So, this also is wrong. The right answer is C, utheca. Let me show you how this, can you see this? This is utheca. Now you'll say, oh yes, I have seen this ma'am. Post-fertilization in cockroaches, the fertilized eggs are encased in capsules called the egg case or the utheca. They are dark reddish of, to blackish brown in color. The female cockroaches drop the utheca at places of high humidity and food source. Female lays about 9 to 10 utheca and each utheca has 14 to 16 fertilized eggs. Spermatheca stores sperms received during copulation. They are found in the 6th abdominal segment of the female cockroach. A pair of large ovaries present in the 2nd to the 6th seg abdominal segments. Each ovary has about 8 ovarioles or the ovarian tubules with developing ova. Ova are the female gametes. Each compound eye which is present on the dorsal side of the head of the cockroach has about 2000 functional units called as omatidia. Okay, so the right answer, the fertilized eggs are stored in utheca or the egg cases. That is the right answer.